This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hi, I'm Cindy Harris. Welcome to Come for Tea. In this episode, I'm going to show you some quick sweets that are easy to put together for an afternoon tea. The first two I'm going to show you are a cinnamon croissant and a Nutella croissant. For these quick sweets, we're going to start with some crescent roll dough that you get at the refrigerator section of the grocery store. We're going to open that up and divide the dough into two portions. That way we can make half of them cinnamon and half of them Nutella. So take one portion of the dough and on your parchment lined baking sheet, separate that out into four triangles. You can see that the dough comes apart real easy, it's perforated. And we just want to get all four triangles laid out on our baking sheet. get some Hershey's cinnamon chips. These are really good and you can find them in the baking aisle at your grocery store over by where the chocolate chips are. And all I'm going to do is just take little handfuls of them and place them all over each triangle of dough. You don't have to be super meticulous about this. Just go ahead and get the chips on the dough and we'll worry about getting those little strays later. Now that we've got our chips on our dough, we're going to go back and I'm just going to kind of press those chips kind of into the dough just a little bit, collecting those little bits that have fallen off to the side. Now I'm going to start with the wide end and I'm going to go ahead and just roll these up. Now once you get it rolled up, you want to make sure that the little end is pointed on the bottom of the sheet because we don't want them to pop open as they uh, bake. So just make sure that little tail is on the bottom uh, part of the croissant on the baking sheet. Now you'll notice that sometimes I'm taking some of those little chips and after I roll it up I kind of tuck them inside. You can absolutely do that. They'll just kind of melt and be delicious. Now I'm going to kind of arrange these croissants on this baking sheet because I'm actually going to now make the Nutella croissant. So I'm just going to flip my baking sheet around and get that second portion of dough unwrapped and placed on the baking sheet. Nutella is a chocolate hazelnut spread and um, I usually find it over by where the jams are in the grocery store and what's great about it is it's very smooth and easy to work with. So I'm just going to take my little knife and take a big glob of the Nutella and I'm just going to spread it all over each one of these triangles of dough. Then when all the Nutella is spread out on the dough, I'm just going to take the wide end of each triangle and roll it up just like I did the cinnamon croissants. Again, making sure that that little tail is tucked on the bottom. One of the things that's great about making both the cinnamon and the Nutella croissants is that with one package of dough, you get two really delicious sweets out of it because you bake them at the same time. So once I get everything arranged on my baking sheet, then I'm going to pop these into a 375 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes and they come out like this, nice and golden and puffy. And you can even see the cinnamon and the Nutella kind of oozing out. They're just fantastic. You do want to let them sit just for a few minutes to kind of cool down because they're super hot when they come out of the oven. Now here's the cinnamon croissant. Now these are a little too big for the tea tray, so I'm just going to take a knife and cut those open. And all that cinnamon is so great in the middle. In fact, these are really good for breakfast. I wouldn't bother cutting them in half, but they taste like a cinnamon roll, but they're so much easier to put together. 
And then here are the Nutella ones. Again, they're a little too big, so I'm gonna cut them in half. And look at all that hazelnut chocolate inside. They are just fabulous. People gobble these up. So this really is a great quick sweet. The cinnamon croissant and the Nutella croissant. Great to have these items in your pantry. You can throw them together really quickly. Now the next quick sweet I'm gonna show you are these darling little trifle bites. If you've ever had English trifle, it's pudding and sponge cake and jam, it's fantastic. Well, I've just made them bite size. Now we're gonna start by getting a frozen pound cake at the grocery store. And then we're going to take a very sharp non-serrated knife and we're going to cut slices about a half an inch thick. Pound cake is a really easy cake to work with because it's so dense, it cuts really, really easily and very accurately. Now you're gonna take the slices of pound cake and you're gonna get two slices and put them together. And I'm working on a piece of parchment. You could work on a piece of wax paper if you'd like. And then you're gonna take your knife and you're gonna trim off the edges of the pound cake so that when we're done here, we have these little rectangles of cake. So the next thing we do is we lay out all of our cake slices and we're gonna add a little flavor to this cake. In a traditional English trifle, you would use some dry sherry and that's what we're gonna to use too. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of dry sherry and I'm gonna put it in a bowl and then I'm gonna take a small spoon and I'm just gonna spoon it on each of the layers of cake. It's not a lot of sherry, but it does give that classic English trifle flavor that people expect. Now, once we've got sherry on all the slices of cake, we're going to put the pieces of cake back together before we fill them because these are too big. We want bite size. So I'm just going to put them together, cut them in half, and then flip them back open. If we were to try to cut these into bite sized pieces when they're filled, things would just be gooing out all over the place. So this is a much easier way to deal with it. Now, once you have your cake all cut in its nice little bite-sized pieces, it's time to start filling these little trifles. So I'm gonna use some seedless raspberry jam, and I'm just gonna take and put some in a bowl and kind of mix it up to kind of loosen it up. And then I'm just gonna put a little dollop on one side of the trifle bite. Once I have the jam in place, I'll go back and I'll use my spoon and I'll kind of pull it out to the edges just a little bit. You don't want it gooping over the side, but you do want the jam kind of spread out a little bit. So now that we have our jam layer, now we're gonna put our pudding layer. So I'm just using some sugar-free vanilla pudding, because that's easy, and you only need one little container of it. And I'm just gonna take my little spoon, and I'm just gonna put a little dab of pudding on top of the raspberry jam. Now it's time to put our top layer of cake on. Now make sure you flip it onto the cake because we want the side that has that little bit of sherry to go on top of the pudding. So just go ahead and then give it a little press down, not too much. Like I said, you don't want things to kind of spill over the edges of the little bites. Now to decorate these just a little bit, I'm gonna take just a little bit of my raspberry jam and just put a little dot right on top of each of the cakes. Now if you had some fresh raspberries, they would be great on the tops of these little cakes, but I didn't have any. So I had some sliced almonds, and so I'm just gonna take a slice of almond and put that right into the jam. These little English trifle bites are so delicious and they're really easy to put together. The next time you're having a tea, I hope you'll give one of these quick sweets a try. For more information on this episode, go to our website and visit the Come For Tea show notes. Also, if you have any questions or ideas, send us an email. Thanks for watching. It's time for tea. Want to see what's going on behind the scenes at Harwood Podcast Network? 
Maybe you want to know what's going on with your favorite shows. You can follow us by going to twitter.com forward slash Harwood Podcast. We have daily entries, photos, all kinds of behind the scenes info. We'll see you on Twitter.